Well, hello. Thank you for inviting me along. My name's Kath McGrath. My name's Michael, Michael Rainey. I'm a volunteer with Ski Aff. I'm from Dumbarton. This is my local parish. Hello, my name's Vincent Raven. I'm from Cumbernauld. My name's Olivia McKibben and I'm a student at Notre Dame. Volunteering means giving of yourself, um, repaying goodness back because I'm very privileged that I've had a a great life and I want to share that good fortune with others who unfortunately won't have the same uh, background. Uh, volunteering to me would probably be just doing something for other people um, whenever you can. I've done lots of things for volunteering I suppose. Um, I could go back 30 years in this very building doing an Easter Tridium with a sponsor 24 hour fast for Skiaf and having these guest speakers from Skiaf come and talk to a, a group of about 40 young people. Um, so I suppose as well as the, the fundraising activities that we did, it was also talking to young people, that's the main two areas that I've done. Um, the last five years or so I've been in, I don't know how many schools, countless numbers of schools, um, and delivered materials for Skiaf, whether it be the Lenten campaign or whether it be other materials for them. I've done a good few projects with them. I've, um, I've done the, their climate activist, one of their climate champions, I think it's called. And I was part of their COP26 stuff. I've uh, done a couple of videos for their social media and it's all been a really good experience. I also, um, there was a campaign for Boris Johnson to try and get him to do something about climate change. And it was called The Race Against Time. And I showed up as a clock and I, I was part of a campaign to run across the banks of the Clyde dressed as a clock to try and get Boris Johnson to do some stuff against climate change. Very fun, uh, not, ex not entirely what I expected it to be, but uh, I don't know what I did expect it to be, so it was good. I feel I've been very fortunate in my life. I've been, um, apart from losing my husband, right enough, but um, not ha I don't have any children. I've got no um, ties, if you like, so I'm free to do things like this, and I enjoy doing things like this, and Schools might get the benefit, but I also get the benefit for, of doing this as well. Not that I'm looking for praise or anything, I don't mean that. I just feel that I'm giving something back. Um, I've had a good life, I've had a good job, I've had a good living with my husband and so on. And so I would like to see that, that anything that I can do for other people, that I, I'm very, very willing to do that. Otherwise I would just be sitting watching daytime television. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> I really like about Skiaf is we're helping people who I'll probably never ever meet in countries I'll never visit, but there is still a connection there um, no matter how far away they are. Um, I feel quite proud as a Scottish Catholic. Like I feel like I'm playing my part um, for like, the charitable sense. I feel like I'm, I'm contributing to something bigger than myself. Loads of people my age, they're um, very performative and they'll say, I believe in all this stuff, but I can't be bothered to get up and do anything about it. Skiaf gives me the opportunity to um, be a bit impactful and gives me the privilege to um, deliver and be a part of something bigger than myself. I think it's not a feel-good factor, it's not that at all, that's, that sounds selfish, but I think it's gratifying when you know you are making a difference or helping to make a difference. I feel lucky being able to actually do this for Skiaf. Um, I, I, I said to one group in a school, you know, Skiaf is a fantastic vehicle for putting your faith into action because faith is really what drives my desire, I suppose, to, to, to work for Skiaf. We know about, you know, what the church's teachings are, we know about their social teachings, but how do you actually? in real terms put that into practice and Skiaf is a fantastic vehicle for enabling us to do that. So I'm actually very grateful to Skiaf for being able to do that. 
when I was doing um, a Czech collection in St Bridget's Primary School in Tory Glen. It was towards the end of the term, it was the last day of term, and we went out across the road to the church and we had mass. And then at the end, I was asked to do a talk uh, to thank the pupils and thank the staff for the, what they had raised uh, during Lent. Now, Tory Glen's not one of the most, um, the richest parishes, if you like, you know, quite a deprived area. And the school had collected uh, 1,200 and odd pounds. And so I was up there telling the, the children and telling the staff where the money was going and the priest had already gone back to the sacristy, so as we were thanking them and saying goodbye, I was about to walk off the altar when the priest came out, stop, stop. He said, I just want you to know that having listened to the talk that Kath gave, one of our parishioners has actually matched the cheque. They've given £1,200. And it was something that really, really hit me, you know, how generous people are and how um, emotional I got that day, you know, thinking that um, something I had said maybe had touched somebody's heart. The first um, retreat that we did with sixth years, we took a group of sixth years away to an outdoor centre and it was, they were located in cabins in a forest and our chaplain came along and said Mass and then we had the Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and he offered to take himself outside and simply offered to the young people if they wanted to go to confession. And at that point I thought, you'll be out there a long time and perhaps not see anyone. All but two young people took themselves out and went to confession. And that for me was a big event. Uh, it kind of demonstrated to me much as many of those young people wouldn't be at Mass on a Sunday. There was a real need for, for faith and to experience faith. So that, that's always stuck in my mind. Yeah, I mean, lockdown was, was tough for everyone. I think it took a wee while to adjust to it. And I said, refocus your ideas and live in a different way. And up until COVID, the only time I heard Zoom mentioned was as a nice lolly. I remember from the 1970s. So Zoom was a new way of keeping in touch. And SCIAF were, were very inventive, very creative in continuing that commitment, uh, having online meetings in Zoom. Um, having quizzes, just making it light, and just trying to do the best we could in very, very challenging conditions. And I know that some schools, um, despite the, the, the hurdles, um, were determined to keep that going. Mark and Elaine and the other members of SCIAF were very, very professional in their commitment and communicating with us, keeping us up to date about what the plans were, and asking for ideas that they could also adopt to try and meet this challenge to everyone in a productive and positive way. They were always looking to uh, make sure you're comfortable with everything, make sure everything was following guidelines and stuff so I, I came into it knowing that they had your best interest at heart. With SCAF you know you feel as if you're part of a family um, you know part of the team it's not just oh you're a volunteer you know you don't matter that was one thing, you know, that we were kept in the loop and invited to take part in maybe Zoom calls. And that, that was excellent because, you know, it kept you up to date um, and the calls and the emails, you know, from Mark and from Elaine, these were great, you know, just, you're important, you know, we're still thinking about you. We can't meet up physically, we can't go and do what we normally do, but you're still there. And that was, that was so nice. I went round the doors in my own town, you know, handing out the wee box, putting wee boxes through the letterbox, just to make sure that it, they were getting them. Um, counting the money, Father would bring up the money that was handed in and I would count the money, bag it ready for banking. One of my colleagues who I, I met at university, who also spent his whole career teaching geography, we both retired at the same time. Uh, we both um, had an input to the, the resource that Mark and Elaine were putting together targeted for National 5 and higher. And having taught that for so many years and climate change 
been a huge, huge um, subject. I, I thought it'd be useful to kind of keep that at the top of people's list. As I found before I retired, we were relying on the same case studies year after year, and they were rapidly becoming outdated. So I think the fact that SCIAF came up with some very, very recent success stories about case studies and putting a positive spin on the tackling of climate change was something that I felt uh, was needed and I'm very grateful to SCIAF for producing that resource. I um, yeah, was asked to speak at um, the church at Nelson Mandela Square and it was quite um, daunting to start off with seeing all those people there and going after all these really incredible speakers and I hadn't looked at my script at all. So I uh, went on and I just, I felt like a really welcoming environment from all the SCAF people, from all the people there because we all shared this idea of climate justice. I care about climate uh, justice because I think it's the most important thing of our generation and for every generation. It is the thing that is unilaterally um, impacting all of us and it will impact the future generation. So if we don't take action to stop it, then uh, the impact's just going to get worse and worse. Having the chance now potentially to go face to face again in person is something I'm really looking forward to. When I first started this phase of, if you like, of volunteering, um, I envisaged I'd obviously be doing this every year on year, and of course it just came to a grinding halt. So no, I, I, I had no hesitation about going back. Ski to me is all about compassion, justice, faith, giving, commitment, kindness, equality, change and love. Perfect, thank you. If there was a meal for John Paul II, I suspect he would be quite happy to have something wholesome and healthy and handmade. Wholesome, healthy and handmade. Alliteration. Alliteration. <laughs> They, they would have Mark and Elaine and James and Kirsten. No, it's Kirsten, sorry. Just, oh, sorry, not you. If I was to sum it up, volunteering with Skiaf in three words. <laughs>